Start the clock. Howdy, kids. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some Dr. News. Um, yeah, somebody reminded me yeah, that this weekend is Easter weekend. So this is what we're going to do. And we're going to take the big trouble in old China cast. It would have been this Saturday. And I'm going ahead and just clean the slate for this weekend because I want everybody to go out, spend time with their family, their loved ones and all that. I can't believe I forgot it was Easter. So big trouble in old China is going back to the 18th. Okay, I'll don't worry. I'll post this up probably on the Dr. Freedom page, even on um, Facebook, that because the 11th is going to be Simon Fisher Becker. We're going to be doing a Q&A with him on Skype. Um, I've been trying to get him to go on Zoom, but he says he has trouble getting Zoom to work on his computer. So we're going to do this on Skype. It's going to likely be audio. And then I hope everybody has a good time. Keep in mind, though, we're going to be recording that one at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 6 p.m. UK, okay? And if anyone who else wants in on it, I've already got a handful of names written down. Please contact me, or if you have questions that you'd like to ask Simon, please bounce them to me within the next week, and I will gladly ask him. You know, ask him what's up. You know, you give him your question. You know, you know, as we have the time to do so. All right. So keep that in mind. Simon Fisher Becker on the 11th. We're going to be doing no Omega Files this weekend because of Easter, and then on the 18th we're going to come back with Big Trouble in Old China. Okay. Coolies. All righty. So first up on the docket, let's go ahead and let's run on over here because we got some pictures. Um, this was thanks to a young lady. Okay, on Twitter. so thanks to Tracy Pattison over on Twitter. We're going to have these photos right here. See, uh, I, I, I suddenly remembered it. No, actually, I went and looked it up because I had the time, you know, editing and on it. I hate doing editing, but okay, here we go. Okay, this is Tredegar House. Um, it's been used for I don't know how many Doctor Who filmings. We're talking end of time, whatnot. Um, it's been used for multiple, multiple shoots for Doctor Who. And this is where apparently where they were shooting earlier today. Um, this, here's an interior shot. Exterior of the place. One of the uh, crane, you know, dolly setups. And this is one of the shots that came on Twitter. And, of course, this young lady has plastered her name across it. I don't know why people do this if you're going to stick a photo up on Twitter, but because it doesn't matter anyway, because it's already been used over on Doctor Who TV. And all they did was they edited, I think, one person out for this next photo. And of course, this young lady got her picture taken with Capaldi. What I want you to pay note to is, though, check the trousers. Um, these are very reminiscent of like almost a Hartnell slash Trouton era trouser. So maybe it's a new nifty thing he's got going on for these episodes. Okay. And we already saw that. We already know about Maisie Williams. Uh, this was left over from over the weekend. And uh, this is the clapboard I was talking about. This is scene six, episode six. Um, there's another shot of it here up on the monitor. Okay. So that's all we've got right now so far, okay? All right. So nifty, cool stuff running around out there. Um, if you want, go look that up on Twitter. And... Also, um, over on the Doctor Who filming page, I believe they had some of those up. All right, so here we go. Let's go into it. Let's get into today's articles. Let's line them up. Let's ra raring to go. All right. This is a shot from the BBC Instagram. I do not believe this was from today's filming. Uh, I don't think they do either from the from the quotes I've seen. Uh, all right, this is right here. Yeah, this is from Kill the Moon. This is when he's playing around with his yo-yo. They've been posting up little pics like this on their Instagram over the last week or so, you know, from different parts of the shooting. But if you want to go check these picks out, that's where they're at. Okay, Doctor Who Series 9, what we do know. All righty. But if you if you scan down here, they've added the you know, recent members of the guest cast. Also, um, this is all right, down here, we got Missy, Ghosts, and Daleks, whatever that means. And that is to be confirmed, by the way. Um, I'm still waiting for some confirmation. Nobody's talked about it on Twitter ever since. So, all right, writers so far, we got Stephen Moffat, Toby Woodhouse, Jamie Matheson, Catherine Tregina, and Mark Gatiss. Um, Heck, Hedy McDonald directing two episodes. Daniel Hare directing two episodes. Ed Baselgit directing two episodes. Forgive me if I mispronounce his name. And so far for episode titles, we know one and two is The Magician's Apprentice, which is familiar. Then we have the untitled two-parter. And when we have number five with Maisie Williams, the girl who died, and of course, number six, the woman who lived. And number five is being written by Jamie Matheson. A lot of people might remember him from, uh, I, believe he, I believe he wrote, uh, was it Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline? And 
So I'm really looking forward to see what he's got. Catherine Trajana has uh, written multiple episodes for Torchwood. And from my remember right, they were all pretty good ones. So I'm looking forward to seeing her take on Doctor Who. Okay, it's going to be pretty interesting stuff. All right, over here, five reasons to rejoice and make Jamie Mathens return. This also on Doctor TV. You notice I've been straying away from them a lot lately. but that's, All right. They also have five reasons to rejoice at Toby Whithouse. All right, five, though. This is for Jamie Matheson. Exceptional characterization. Uh, four, original dominating threats. Three, atmosphere. Two, no weak roles. And number one, balance of tones. And I have to agree with him on that. Jamie Matheson's episodes were incredible for last season. He did a fantastic job. You know, Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline. Yeah, yeah all right. that's right. They were awesome stuff. Matter of fact, I loved Flatline. And a lot of people got out, you know, went weird on it about how it was too quote unquote Clara centric. I don't see that. I don't see it as a companion or Dr. Light episode, given the fact, yeah, you know, the doctor was trapped inside the TARDIS for most of the episode, but at the same time, he was taking an active part, but in his own little way. So good stuff. I, I really love those episodes that he did. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to bring us in series nine. All right. Also on Doctor Who News, Myth Makers April releases. A new interview from the doc with Doctor Who composer Dominic Lynn is released on April 1st by Real Time Pictures as part of the Myth Maker series. DVDs available from Galaxy 4 can be ordered and downloaded from Time Travel TV. These are those series of interviews and all that they've been bringing up. All right. Matter of fact, uh, also out this month are some reissues of classic interviews for Myth Makers. Uh, see, we got John Pertwee, John Leeson, Flight Through Eternity, the 60s, Raymond E. Fe Feist, Gareth Thomas. Barry Letts and Terrence Dix, uh, who on Earth, are yeah, just two on Earth is Tom Baker, the Venoptican tapes and Mind Game trilogy, and they're all available from Time Travel TV. There is a link right here if you want to go click on that to go check these out. All right, also on Doctor Who news, guess what? More freaking variant covers for Doctor, you know, for um, Ninth Doctor number one. I'm not kidding. This has gotten a little bit crazy. Titan have released a preview of a number of additional variant covers of the new comic set based on the Adventures of the Ninth Doctor, as played by Christopher Eccleston. The five-part series, released on Wednesday, is was written by the co-author of the best-selling Whoology, Kevin Scott, and illustrated by Blair Shedd. So, if you want to go check these out, there's some more of them now. How many they are going to have by the time this is done? I don't know. It's just gotten bananas, but here they all are if you want to go check them out. So basically, there's pretty much a cover for anybody here. You know, or if you're a collector, you may want to snatch all these babies and stick them on boards and, you know, and stick them in a bag and hang out them. Okay. And next up, how many times will Clara leave Doctor Who? And this is an opinion piece over on Warp Factor. Um, she dies. She comes back. She shouts. She leaves. She comes back. She gets old. And she leaves. She comes back again. Sam takes a look at the many times Clara could have left Doctor Who. Now, a lot of people didn't believe me when I sat down and told them that, um, yeah, she was planning on leaving. She was. And I kept telling them she was planning on leaving. And then she changed her mind at the 11th hour, literally. Then it became, well, I want to stay for this. And then it became, I want to stay for Christmas. Then it became, no, I want to stay on period. So they had to do a little bit of rewriting before. You know, I'm shocked everything's running on schedule because there was a little bit of stuff they had to rewrite here and there so they could squeeze her character back in. Um, that's also why she had all these conventions scheduled. Because she was originally going you know, to be, you know, off the show for that time. But now apparently she's going to do her last couple of appearances during the Easter break. So, you know, no biggie there. But if you want to go check this out, here it is over on Warp Factor. Okay. And lastly for today, 10 upcoming films starring Doctor Who actors that you have to see. Let's run through these rather quickly. All right. Number 10, uh, Throwaways with Noah Clark. Um, I also loved him in The, the, the Doghouse. Uh, that movie's funny as heck. It's not exactly a zombie league. Bukowski with Alex Kingston. Eight, North versus South, a, a, a Freeman Agumon. Or is it Agumon? I always mix that up. Legend with Christopher Eccleston. Uh, Kapchka with Arthur Darville. And by the way, we just found out Arthur Darville's being cast in a role in the Arrow slash Flash spinoff. So, all righty. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, Matt Smith. And there was just an article up not too long ago on Denna Geek that says that, yeah, that's that's been pushed back to February of 2016, or that's when the reserves are going. Reds and Grays with David Tennant. And number three, Lost River with Matt Smith. Uh, that's not upcoming. That's not going anywhere. Matter of fact, uh, from what I'm hearing, I don't think it's going to see a widespread release. 
Number two, in the Valley of in a, all right, in a Valley of Violence with Karen Gillan. And number one, Terminator Genesis with Matt Smith. And you know, as we all know, he's already been uh, signed up for the trilogy. So he's pretty much in this sucker for good. You know, matter of fact, they said he starts off with a minor role and then that role builds as the saga goes on. And from what we're hearing, though, according to a quote-unquote spoiler leak, so you've heard that word, that apparently he's going to be, they're saying he's playing the embodiment of Skynet. But the thing is, it's kind of weird because you do see him in some of the film clips off in the background, he's with the Resistance. So you got to wonder you know, if that's true or not. And speaking of that, before I sign off now, anything you see on April 1st, as far as Doctor Who news goes, don't listen to it. 5WF already stuck up an article claiming that Russell T. Davies was coming back to write two scripts for Series 9. Now, for one, 5WF is a YouTube channel. Number two, I don't know how reliable their information is or if it's not, but also taking the fact, number three, it's already April Fool's over there as of the timing of this, you know, this article is put up. So chances are it's a 99.9% you know, probability that that story is false. So if you see that drifting around, also the fact that we know for a fact, remember RTD has already come out and stated he's not really in the mood or even in, as the you know motive to write any more Doctor Who. He's done with it as far as he's concerned. He enjoys the fact that the show has gone on, but he has also gone on. He's doing other projects. You know, he had Wizards vs. Aliens, Cucumber, and whatnot. He, you know, so I don't see... It really happening. It's nine, you know, it was already dated April 1st because it came out in the UK. So chances are it's an April Fool's joke. And you're going to see those all over the place today. The second April 1st hits here, don't believe the article. I'm not kidding. If it is dated April 1st, don't, don't believe it. Okay. So, well, that's it for me, guys. So take care. All oh, keep in mind the Big Trouble in China podcast has been moved to the 18th. Of Mar or the 18th of April. On the 11th of April, we're going to have Simon Fisher Becker doing a Q&A on the Omega Files with us. And, you know, as of this weekend, it's going to be pretty much clear because it's the Easter holiday and I want folks out there spending time with their families, their loved ones and whatnot, and not having to worry about doing a podcast. Okay, so until next time, guys, take it easy, take care, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Then again, I may not because April Fool's Day, I don't like to do reports on April Fool's Day. Maybe the other I'll do a little gag video, but I'm not sure if I'll even bother doing that. But so, later, guys. <laughs>